22nd presentation at digital dealer conferences. Several conferences I've done, two and three. So that's why there's been 12 digital dealers and this is my 22nd. And uh, every time I do a presentation at digital dealer, I'm very, very proud to be standing in front of a room full of digital marketing uh, professionals like yourselves. And I also feel a big burden of responsibility to deliver the goods because obviously you had eight or nine other rooms you could have chose. You chose to come to my session, and I want to make sure that you come back the next time I show up at Digital Dealer, hopefully. So a couple things I've learned along the way. Number one, I know that everybody always asks, can I get a copy of your presentation? And I also know that when you say you want a copy of my presentation, it's not the PDF file you want. You want the PowerPoint file, so you can modify it with my blessings and do whatever you want with it because that's the way we roll. So uh, at the end of my presentation today, the very last slide, I've got several links to resources. And these are URLs I set up last night, so they're, it's all brand new. But one thing I want to say right up front is if you go to slideshare.net slash my name, Ralph Paglia, I have this uploaded in two versions, the PPT version and the PPTX version because some people like the old school PowerPoint. Thank you very much, Damon. And some people like the new format, so you have your choice. The other, thing, the other reason is, um, has anybody here ever used SlideShare for your dealership? Isn't it a great tool? One little tip, and I'm trying to remember who taught me this, but it was, it was at one of these events, and somebody in the audience uh, tipped me off to this. You always want to upload your PowerPoints for your dealership in PPT file rather than PPTX because PPT gets converted to HTML by SlideShare and it indexes with the search engines and the PPTX file for whatever reason doesn't. So that's another reason why, and it's very easy, you just save it as a PPT, the 2003 version instead of the new version. So with that said, my goal for today, and this is, this is by the way verbatim right out of the catalog, I want to make sure that you're all in the right place because this is what I'm going to be covering. My goal today was to very quickly in a few minutes kind of give you a, a, a snapshot of what's been happening in, in automotive digital marketing. Now one of the reasons why I chose to do that for a topic is there's not a lot of us that have been doing this for 20 years. I have. Maybe Paul, I don't know, Paul, how long? Okay, well he's been in it for a while. But at any rate, so, so I've been here since the days of the BBS, the bulletin board systems. I've been here for the launch of Auto Vitale in 1995. That kind of rocked our world. I remember 1999 when uh, Cars Direct came out and woo -hoo -hoo, that shook up everybody because Cars Direct was going to take over the world. Sound familiar? Deja vu, little deja vu going on lately. So uh, I wanted to give everybody sort of a snapshot, but there's, a, there's actually a practical reason for this. What you're going to find out, one of the things that strikes me having been here playing in the game for 20 plus seasons, is there certain principles that we learned a long time ago that still apply today? And you need to get, you need to grab on to these lessons that were learned so long ago, and you need to grab on to them right away because you can't afford to take the same amount of time that I've taken to learn this stuff. You can't afford to take the same amount of time as Paul or some of the other veterans in this business have taken because you'll never catch up. So hopefully today I want to share some insights and obviously within the time constraints, I really can't cover everything I would like to cover. So one of the things we'll be doing is we'll be doing some webinars. The whole presentation, like for those of you who came in late, is available for download at slideshare.net slash my name. Slideshare.net slash Ralph Paglia. And I have it set so you can freely download it in its original file format so you can modify it and do it with it as you will with my blessings. Okay. So with that said, um, I recognize enough faces in the room where, oh, I have to ask, because I always ask this, how many of you are here for your first digital dealer conference? You know, I, I want to congratulate. All of you are here for your first digital conference. Yeah, give, let's give it up for these guys. I've been to every digital dealer conference since the first one we did in a closet in Nashville. Um, <laughs> And I got to tell you, every time I'm amazed at how many people come that are new, that's your first one. But I want to congratulate you because you're in the right place. Make sure you attend lots of conferences. I highly recommend April Rain's instructions for uh, surviving digital dealer conference, which is posted on automotivedigitalmarketing.com. 
Uh, and the bottom line is, you got to keep yourself a curfew so you can make those early morning <laughs> sessions, okay? So for all you newbies out there, I've been doing this for a while, I've been around the block. I don't claim to be the smartest digital marketer on the planet, but I've probably been doing it longer than most people. And I've been exposed to every cockamamie new idea that's ever come out for, that's going to change the way we sell cars, okay? So um, I may not be the uh, most expensive model on the used car lot, but I definitely have the most miles. <laughs> and that goes in, in several different uh, matters. So any, if you want to see my resume, go to LinkedIn. And by the way, thank you for everybody who's giving me recommendations. Okay, so let's get to the meat of the matter. I had a lot of fun putting this together, the timelines. Because for me, this isn't history. For me, this is like yesterday. For example, it doesn't seem like that long ago. If you look up here, this blue arrow, and I think one of these is a laser pointer. Yeah. It, it, um, this is really embarrassing to say this for a lot of you. But in 1986, I was taking my stock cards and uploading inventory to bulletin board systems for defense contractors in San Diego. And man, we were selling cars. We were selling cars, and nobody knew how I was doing it, and I kept it a secret as long as I could. So moving on past then, the official launch of the internet, public face, and this timeline shows 1990, but the reality was there was a company called Compu uh, CompuServe. And in, the, in, the, in 1986, you could be a charter member and get internet access. So enough of the ancient history. Moving on up here. 1994 was the first time we saw any e-commerce, people putting credit cards online. 1995 was a huge year for both e-commerce in general and for the auto industry. Can anybody tell me now, there's a lot of stuff on here, Amazon, Yahoo, eBay, MSN, buy.com, but look up here. Anybody remember when Auto by Tell launched? Okay, because you were too young. You are still going to grammar school? Um, well, when Auto by Tell launched, they were going to change the world. And uh, as a matter of fact, I drank the Kool-Aid and I ran around the country setting up internet departments uh, for Auto by Tell. In 1997 or 98, Cobalt launched. And in uh, late 1998 and going into 99, we launched a company called Cybercar. Cybercar was a remarkable experience. Anybody here ever hear of Cybercar from half a car? Okay, Remarkable experience, remarkable company few veterans in the room. And uh, in 2000, 1999, we had the launch of Cars Direct. Anybody here remember when Cars Direct launched? What was Cars Direct going to eliminate? Dealers. Cars Direct mission was, you don't need to buy a car from a car dealer. You can purchase your vehicle through Cars Direct, save money, and have a better experience. Anybody got a little deja vu going on? OK, so, so we all know what happened there, right? So then the response from Cars Direct, and this is a very important milestone. If, um, how many people here sell Fords? Any people sell it here sell Fords? OK. So I want to point something out to you guys. Um, I've worked with most of the major car companies. Ford, by far, is the most advanced when it comes to automotive digital marketing. They got a head start, but it was interesting why. Ford Direct was launched in direct response to what? Cars Direct. So the creation of Cars Direct is what spawned the creation of Ford Direct. Um, and Ford Direct was actually created with the idea that they were going to help dealers sell cars directly on the internet, complete transactions. So with all that said, we have a whole bunch of other cool things. I remember in 2004, I was working for Reynolds and & Reynolds, and somebody came to me from HR and said, Ralph, you need to get on LinkedIn. I thought that meant I was getting fired. But anyway, I joined LinkedIn when there was like 55,000 members. And I, th I consider it a very valuable tool. In, um, uh, in 2005, and I really wanted to point this out because now we're getting up into the current, we're getting close to the current period. In 2005 was the first year that car dealers started experimenting with something called behavioral targeting. Have any of you, anybody here, raise your hand if you ever heard of BT, behavioral targeting. Blows my mind that so many of you have heard of it. So um, I had the privilege of being the first person crazy enough to buy behavioral targeting at the dealership level, which I did from Courtesy Chevrolet in Phoenix in 2005. And it was, um, it was one of those deals where I had to buy four states. I couldn't even get it geo-targeted to my city. But I was that whacked out where I wanted to do it so bad, I bought Nevada, uh, Colorado, Arizona, and California, or Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Nevada, 
because that's all Takoda would sell me. Um, so behavioral targeting has come a long way since then, but that's when dealers started using it. In 2006, we had a little blip. Anybody ever hear of something called Facebook? <laughs> I remember when I came to a, uh, an NADA, not that long ago, NADA in 2008. Now 2008 is not ancient history, right? I remember getting a bag at a meeting that said MySpace on it. <laughs> and when I carried that bag on the plane home, everybody was asking me, ooh, where'd you get the MySpace gym bag? Where can I get a MySpace gym bag? Today, it's in my closet at home. Today, if I were to carry it when I came here, people would be looking at me going, look at the old guy with the MySpace gym bag. <laughs> that was four years ago. It took me four years to get through college. I mean, it's amazing how things have changed. It really is. So with that said, let's go a little further. Now, um, man, boy, this is, looks like alphabet soup. And I apologize, because I know most of you can't read what's on here. But again, download the presentation. You can study it and have fun with it. This would be great, by the way, for Trivial Pursuit. OK? But there's a couple things along the way I want to point out. Info out websites. In 2000, what was the name of the game? Put our information on dealer websites, or wherever you can get it, and we're, we were pushing information out, weren't we, in 2000. And the more we could push out, Rob, the better, right? If I could get more out than the next guy, I would sell more cars. So that was a big deal. Then, going into towards the end of 2000, what did we see happening? Remember something about the dot-com bubble bursting? Remember that whole deal? I remember walking into dealerships in 2000, early 2001, and I had dealers. And um, John, I bet you remember this. I don't have to pay attention to the internet because the dot-com bubble burst. <laughs> Anybody remember hearing stuff like that? Where the dealers would say, hey, the dot-com bubble burst. I don't have to have an internet sales team anymore. Um, so we, we went through that. Traditional markets were threatened. And then there was something that came along the way, discussion forums. Has anybody here ever posted a comment or read a blog post or, or gotten involved on a discussion forum? I'm going to suggest to all of you that that is like a big hidden, it's kind of like an iceberg. There's so much below the waterline on these discussion forums. And in 2001 is when they really started rolling. Then, how about, does anybody remember this? Anybody remember buying film, getting pictures developed? How about today? You know what I love about digital? The hardest thing to get used to is take as many pictures as you want. The crappy ones will just delete, right? And you know, you know, you see somebody going, I got to get everything just right before I snap the picture. What is that a remnant of? <laughs> Film. Because I don't want to have to, I only got 18 pictures on a roll. I can't waste any. <laughs> now we buy a 16 gigabyte memory card that'll hold 6,000 pictures on our little digital camera. Or, or better yet, we do it with our cell phone. I think I've got 5,000 pictures right now on my cell phone. So that changed everything. Then there was a concept that happened, and I was working at Reynolds and Reynolds when this concept really got popular. Has anybody here ever heard the, word, the term used, integration? <laughs> Boy, did that have, anybody have any nightmares? AJ, I bet you've had nightmares about that. <laughs> integration is one of those concepts where everybody loves to use that term. Very few of us ha could define it if we really had to, except for maybe Anoop. Anoop, I think you might understand integration at a deep te technical level. All right, but integration became a big deal, and it still is to this day. How about search dominance up here? How many of you have lost sleep over Google reviews disappearing? <laughs> Has anybody here been beat up by their dealer principal? I was in Miami a couple of weeks ago, Mario Morgado Sr., not Junior, because Junior's a heck of a nice guy. Mario Morgado Sr. is kind of scary. I mean, I would say that to him if he was in the room. I, will, I respect him, but he's a little scary. He comes in and says, Bagley, 1,700 reviews, gone, like that. Do you know what that makes us look like? It makes us look like we've been caught doing something wrong. You've got to fix this right away. And I'm sitting there going, I don't own Google. I don't even work for Google. Why am I being held accountable for this? You know why? And have any of you ever felt that way? Why am I being held accountable for something Google does? It's because it's the first thing digital that has really taken 
mind share at the dealer level. I talk to dealers all the time that know nothing about automotive digital marketing, but they know Google. And they know that their listing better be correct. And they know when they get reviews, they better be there tomorrow. So that's what happened there. Analytics. How many of you study analytics on a regular basis? Anybody here look at reports? Um, how many of you have heard the term unique visitor? Come on. That few? How many of you have heard the term click? Okay, the rest of you are asleep, because I know you've all got, you've heard that term. Analytics has created a whole new language within the auto industry. We talk about it, we, we, we um, assume that everybody understands what we're talking about, but analytics haven't been around that long. They really started emerging in 2004, 2005. We used to spend a lot of money for analytics. Moro, remember how much, uh, uh, what was it, um, Omniture, Site Catalyst, stuff like that. Remember how much that stuff cost? It was like 1500 a month for an analytics package. Today, how much does Google Analytics cost? It's free, and it's probably some of the best analytics you'll ever get. So my, has the world changed. Tagging. Anybody here know what tagging means? Tagging is real important, everybody. If you don't know what it means, I'm not going to cover it today. You need to look it up outside of this session. You need to learn all about tagging. RSS and widgets. Anybody here ever play around with RSS feeds and widgets? OK, do more of that. <laughs> John, I'm so glad you raised your hand, because I would have been upset if you had. Um, customer experience. Not that it was a new concept, but what do you think this is referring to around 2007? Where was this customer experience showing up? Reviews, ratings, comments, blog posts. And man, did that open up a whole Pandora's box or what? As soon as consumers figured out that somebody was paying attention, what happens? They all got something to say, right? So I mean, they, you're going to find out later in my presentation, we're going to talk about the future, where we're going with that. Google. Enough said, I'm not going to talk too much about that. Social networking, really um, social networking came into its own in 2007 when the race became, when was Facebook going to overtake MySpace? And that really kind of got the whole social networking ball rolling. And what a snowball it's become, hasn't it? Because it's gotten pretty big. Um, Rob, how important are videos on social media? Very important. Do they affect how many cars we're going to sell? So, I mean, what a world that we've, we've walked into in the last few years. Uh, Geotagging, very important, emerged. 100 million YouTube clips with a billion views per day in 2008. When was YouTube launched? 2006. In two years, they went to 100 billion clips a day. 100 million clips a day and a billion views per day. And that, num that, that was in 2008. That number is bigger now. And then in 2008, which also was a big year, like 2005 was a big year, Web 2.0 pushes user expectations and challenges traditional markets. A little more deja vu. Remember challenging traditional markets in 1999 and 2000? There's a pattern going on here, and you can learn from this pattern. Social net aggregation tools, tools like Dig and Delicious, and now even Facebook. How many of you have ever pushed a link to your Facebook wall? Anybody here ever push a link? Okay, and isn't it cool the way it populates, it picks a picture right off that page and takes like the first 200 characters, and then you get to write a little piece on top of it? Big. This is going to change the way people decide to purchase cars. Technology convergence, what we mean by that technology convergence is whether you use an iPad, an iPhone, a Droid, a laptop, a PC, all, you're, you're going to the same places. So you have a lot of different technology formats all converging. So this is the extension of that previous timeline. A couple of notable things I wanted to mention. Uh, Ford, Ford launched very quietly in 2000, late 2007, going into 2008, the first digital advertising program for dinners, since, for dealers. Since then, Cobalt has launched it for GM dealers, and it's, it's snowballed again, bigger and bigger. 
There's a GM launch right there. Um, all these different companies emerging. As far as what's going on in the future, most of you, if I say the Minority Report, how many of you know what I'm referring to? The Tom Cruise movie, The Minority Report? Remember the advertising? Everywhere Tom Cruise would, would walk, the advertising would change and would be custom tailored to Tom Cruise. So a friend of mine at American Honda Motor Company, Michael Kiernan, did a presentation a couple years ago at a CRM conference. So ever since then, I call this the Michael Kiernan effect, the Minority Report effect. That's the world we're going into, and that's why tagging is so important. So just a little recap, 1986, we were generating leads. Think about that. That was how long ago? Thir uh, 26 years? So 26 years ago, I don't know about anybody else, but I was generating email leads 26 years ago. This is not new. If any of you, for those of you that this is your first digital dealer conference, so glad to have you here, but please do not consider what's going on with the web or social media or internet as being new. This stuff has been studied, it's been uh, measured, it's been tested, it's been tracked for over 20 years. Don't relearn the same lessons the same way that the rest of the industry has spent the last 26 years learning. Grab those lessons learned, internalize them, and move on. 1995, Auto Bytel goes public. That was a big deal. By the way, I thought it was interesting. In 1999, I was trading for $40 a share. When I did this presentation, I was trading at 70 cents a share. I don't know what went wrong. I mean, look what happened to Google in the same time period. Cars Direct, launched in 98 by Scott Painter. This was, um, whether you like Cars Direct or not, you have to give them credit on transforming the auto industry. They shook everything up. They were a disruption. And the fact that so many of you are in this room is a testimony to the impact of that disruption. Give credit where credit's due. Now, I wanted to pause here, and I'll be the first to admit I got a personal bias because I work for Cybercar. Company no longer exists, so I don't have to worry about pushing a product. But I, I wanted to play a video from 1999, and I just want to ask you if it's still relevant today, because I think it is. The first 30 seconds are kind of a waste, but then from there I think you'll like it. Do you guys hear that? Cybercar is an international training and technology company that has over 250 full-time consultants that serve over 4,000 Can you all hear it? dealerships in 18 countries. This allows us to collect truckloads of insight, information, information and insight that we deliver to your dealership. So this, this first part is the propaganda trailer, the intro. This is where it gets interesting. Whoops. Okay, so you know something? I knew I should have used my own laptop. The bottom line is what was really kind of interesting about that clip, sorry about that, didn't mean to chase you guys out, but um, I don't blame you. Anyway, what was really interesting about that clip is this, people. Um, it predicted that dealers would develop their own lead generation capabilities. This was 1999. It predicted that dealers would struggle with third-party lead providers and then eventually would, would have to really take back and reclaim the space, the branding that is going on in there. And that's something that's very important to remember. So, AJ, yes? Is that in the slideshare? Yeah, it, it's a flash file. So if anybody wants, if you send me an email, the problem with flash is I have to convert it to a zip file because otherwise Outlook doesn't like it. Anyway, here's, here's the thing that in those days, this strategy, has anybody ever here ever heard of these four points for your strategy? Traffic, interaction or engagement, and a bigger, you better raise your hand, brother. Um, process, and then sales, or what I, use, what I like to refer to as showroom. This is something that we were using in 1999 to help transform the industry into seeing the value of using the internet to sell more cars. And what you're going to see is when we go forward to today, I'm going to share with you uh, the idea that this strategy is still relevant. This strategy of attracting customers, 
having assets on the web, whether it be a Facebook page, a YouTube video, a dealer website, a microsite, on and on, ad nauseum, whatever those assets are, you have to have something that will engage the consumer. Once the consumer engages and reveals who they are and what they're interested in, you have to have a process. And that process really needs to lead up to uh, revenue realization, I'll call it. Making a sale, getting them in the service drive. So a lot of times we get distracted from these core strategies. And when you study the history of everything we're doing and all the technology that has come and gone along the way, the one thing that remains true are these four principles of digital marketing. So here's some more elaboration on what those four principles are. How do you measure and track these four principles? I actually got to a point where at one point I was assigning a dollar value to each task. I was taking the total gross generated by the sales, dividing it by the number of tasks that it took to get there, to get that gross, and coming up with a dollar value. So for example, when we got an internet lead to show up at the dealership, it was worth $1,110. Every time we contacted a customer, we were generating $228 in revenue based on how many times we contacted a customer that it took compared to the number of cars we sold and the gross that was generated. All of this goes back to the tips model. This is the process piece. So what are the best dealers? Let's jump forward now to the, to the present and going into the future. First of all, the funnel hasn't changed. All this buzz that I've heard out there about, oh, the sales funnel is dead. The sales funnel doesn't exist anymore. Look, it, it, you're always going to need to talk to more people to get down to the few that end up buying a car or writing up a service ticket. You got more down to a smaller number that give you money. It's always going to look like a funnel or a tornado, or whatever you want to call it. But it's going to have more to less. That has not changed. Now what has changed are these acquisition channels. And this is where it gets complicated. This is where a dealer can get a competitive advantage, is by working the acquisition channels. That's why I suggested to each of you at the very beginning that you understand tagging and you understand tracking cookies and start becoming very familiar with how they're used and what you can use them for to, in order to target the right customers. Has anybody here ever heard the saying, the best thing about the internet is everything is measurable? You ever heard that? That's BS. It's not. That's the worst thing about the internet. There's so much measurement, it'll drive you crazy. Do you know what the best thing about the internet is? Targeting. We can go out there and we can find people that are in the market for a car or are considering getting their car serviced and we can target them a lot easier than we could in the past. Targeting, in my opinion, is dramatically more valuable than measurement. Now, they're very related because by targeting, we get to measure what we've targeted and the effectiveness and who these people are. But take the simple process of, is anybody here familiar with retargeting, where you show ads to customers that have already visited your website? Think about that. That's far more valuable than the reams and reams of of data that you could spend hundreds of hours pouring through and not sell a single car. With retargeting, we're taking somebody who's already been to our website, showing some interest in our dealership's products and services, and we're going back there saying, hey, we're still here. Hi. Tom Gore, come on back to Apple Chevrolet. We got something for you. Do you see the latest coupons? We got some special offers. New inventory came in. By the way, did you know we support the Boy Scouts of America? You know, there's all kinds of things you can do with targeting. So acquisition channels are determined not just by the channels themselves, but by the targeting capability within these acquisition channels. Getting people to your website, getting them to fill out lead forms, buy stuff, fill out an, uh, a, an, a, a service appointment, generates leads which comes down to customers. That's the modern funnel. It's not much different than the old funnel. So what does that come down to, that all this targeting? Today, the best dealers are learning about things like having ad server platforms that hold the networks and the websites accountable. So you can put your ads on an independent platform like Google AdWords is an ad serving platform. 
They bought um, DoubleClick a few years ago. Microsoft has a platform called Atlas. That's what my team uses. These platforms, when the network tries to bill us for 100,000 impressions, the platform says, ah, 20,000 of those are BBACs. You're only getting paid for 80,000. So this type of technology is really enabling us by holding the publishers and networks accountable, including the search engines, ensuring that we're not paying for more than one click for the same customer. So they're important to all of us that are in this business. The targeting methodology, this is the sweet spot. This is where the internet becomes very valuable to car dealers. The ability to target based on contextual behavior, behaviors, which websites are they visiting and what are they doing, demographic targeting, geographic targeting, because we really aren't interested in, you know what the, my main gripe with SEO is, what kind of geo-targeting do you get with SEO? Zero. What I like about actual advertising is you get geo-targeting. You get to say, I want this ad to show up in this market, but you know, over here in Lubbock, we're gonna run a different ad. In Amarillo, we're gonna run a different ad. So geographic targeting is important. Retargeting, I just mentioned and then performance-based results that are attributable to the targeting methods coming from the tagging, which is tracked by the ad server platform. You can do this, by the way. If any of you think this is too complicated, it's not. It actually gets pretty common sense once you get into it. Here's another thing. A few years ago, I used to run around to dealers that would pay anywhere from 1,800 to 2,400 a day to have me come into their dealerships and help them set up their internet marketing. Today, you can go to automotivedigitalmarketing.com, Dealer Elite, Driving Sales, Dealer Refresh, any number of sites, and get thousands and thousands of dollars of free consulting services, right there for the taking. So it's really democratized, the distribution of information. You no longer have to wait for some consultant to show up at your dealership. That's why I had to get a new job. But so now you can get it for free. Look at some of these articles, readily available, from people that are doing it every day. Just like coming to one of these conferences, you can extend the benefit beyond that. Social media marketing, made possible by the advent of customer engagement technologies on massive levels. So this chart, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go through all of this, but this is a timeline on, on the history of social media as far as using it on the internet, because I would submit that um, you know those cave paintings in France from like 10,000 years ago? That was social media. When I was growing up, we used to do some. We had our own version of tagging. You know what it was? I grew up in Buffalo, New York. You know what our version of tagging was? We did it with spray paint. It was graffiti. It was social media. It was social media. So that continues to grow. So how do you make it work for your dealership? In a nutshell, look, there's a lot of stuff out there but the dealer of the future is gonna have this figured out. Number one, you have to have places where you originate content. You can't do social media and be successful without content. Content can be videos, it can be pictures, it can be articles that you write, blog posts, it can be all manner of mediums, but you have to get in the business of creating content in this day and age. I'm looking at Rob from town because I consider him one of the content masters. Uh, Rob, how important is content today? Content is everything. It really has. How important is your inventory? Because your inventory is content. How important are customer reviews of their experience at your dealership? Because guess what? Customer reviews are what they call user-generated what? Content. So you need places for the content to go, to reside, and then from there you have to set up automated distribution I call it spokes, this is a hub, these are spokes, so that you post the content once and it distributes through RSS feeds and applications and widgets that you've set up once so that it automatically distributes. When I go to PenskeCommunity.com and post that Helio Castanevedetti's, I know I'm saying it wrong, that he won a Formula One race, I post it in one place, it appears in 18 other places simultaneously. That's content syndication. Now why would you even do that? Because what happens is that content contains links to where? Back to your e-commerce site. So what content is is the boomerang of the internet. 
Content is what you're throwing out there to bring customers back. Have you ever seen an Australian Aborigine use a boomerang to hunt? That's what content is. It's the internet version of a boomerang. You're throwing it out there, and it's going to turn around and come back, and it's going to bring dinner. Now, there's one other thing. Directories. Man, is this a painful subject. Directories. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Get with a service. Get with a directory management service. I've used ubl.org. I've used Norm. They're all out. There's all kinds of them, local ease. There's a bunch of them out there, but get your dealership's information consolidated into one centralized directory management service. Pay them 300 bucks a year, whatever they charge. And that way, your Yahoo business listing, your Google places, all these other business directories have the right darn phone numbers and the right hours and the right links. The main thing that I get from directories are phone calls. Directories make the phone ring, even more so than traffic. So how does this really look in real world? Getting down a little more granular. When you get reviews, you can get reviews in multiple places. You should have one website where you own the review content. I know of two that do it. I'm sure there's more ways to do it. You can do it yourself. But Presto Reviews, Business Rater, a couple of suppliers that will set you up with your own review websites that are credible and get indexed wells. But you need to treat review content as exactly what it is, content. That means you have to own it and be able to transport it and distribute it. Because once you get those reviews, you're going to then push them to other places where, de where customers are likely to see them. When you get your reviews from Yelp, you take your good reviews and you push them to Facebook. When you have people on Facebook saying good things about you, if they're members of Yelp, you're going to push them to Yelp to get a positive review. You're going to take your reviews, you're going to push them to your WordPress blogs. Your WordPress blogs are going to generate comments. They're going to be reposted. You're going to tweet about the review generated here, 